bitch, yeah, the twins, they be checking in, stacking up, green is the scene that you're stepping in, when it is a trend, and we say making dollars, nerd talk with the sports bet scholars, yeah. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas Earl. I'm joined here as always by my brother Tim. And today, March Madness is upon us. We'll be going over the NHL and the NBA cards. If you guys want a full breakdown of all the college basketball games, check out the rerun of Nerd Talk last night. Uh, we went through all of those games last night on Nerd Talk. It was me, Dave, Billy Briz, and Sean Higgs. We went over every single round one matchup. So if you guys want to check out that, that's where you can find all of my opinions, all of Dave's, uh, Higgs, and Billy Briz on the bracket. We got some hockey to go over, 11 games in the NHL. We get seven games in the NBA. Uh, but before we get into today's games, before we get into today's slate, we'll take a look back at what happened yesterday. One went right, one went wrong in the world of sports betting. And let's start with this morning here, Tim. I start off the morning finding out that my bet won before the Dodgers even got to bat. I had the Padres money line. It was a winner right before uh, before they because they scored five runs in the first inning. And on bet 365, a five-run win, a five-run lead, it's a win. So I woke up to already Padres plus 170 in my back pocket. And then I noticed on FanDuel that uh, I had a boost that I'd never used for the game. So And the Padres were up 11-8 at the time. I took the over 22 and a half and boosted up to plus 150. I'm like, yeah, let's do this. It won. I'm like, this is a great, this is a much better day than uh, yesterday um, when it comes to baseball. So start off this morning with a winner there. Um, but overall, yesterday, Wednesday, it was down half a unit because um, it started off with the Padres money line team total over. Those were both losers. Over 234 and a half, Detroit, um, Indiana. Or a loser, Boston, Milwaukee over 223 and a half was a winner. I doubled down on the Leafs, uh, first period full game. Loved that spot. I thought the Leafs were the best bet on the board, and they come through and they score a touchdown uh, as the Argonauts beat the Commander 7 3. Um, we have the Jazz, OKC over 231 and a half came up short, over six and a half, uh, Dallas and uh, Arizona comes through there, 5-2 victory for the Stars. Colorado Buffaloes with a win there um, against the Boise State Broncos. I think the Buffaloes are very live to beat Florida in the next round, and usually the first four is primed for more is what they say. I think I would look towards Colorado uh, more than Colorado State personally, uh, but I do like I do like Colorado in that next game a little bit against Florida. But uh, – and then uh, wrapped up the night with the over 222 and a half with Philly uh, Phoenix, which lost, and my, uh, Minnesota money line, which was an embarrassingly bad loser, um, which was basically a loser by the end of the first period when it was three nothing. Um, so uh, not the greatest of ends of the day, but hey, um, I take I, I took a couple shots yesterday, and and we'll be taking some shots today on some big dogs and in, in, in the March Madness bracket. So um, that'll be fun, but. Uh, Overall, down about half a unit, though. Yeah, down 0 0.24. We had eight plays yesterday. We went four and four. Um, so down juice. Montana State, god damn, up 14 points in the second half. You figured that would be safe, right? Mm. Loser in overtime. Uh, the over in the Pacer game, nowhere near it. Probably one that was more frustrating than the Montana State game for me was Smoo. Smoo was up double digits at one point. They did not cover the eight points. They lost by nine. So Ouch. just an ugly, ugly day there. Um, you had Toronto, nice winner. Wish you put up the puck line. Um, over in the Arizona game, nice winner there. Um, Wake Forest, minus seven, winner. Buffaloes, uh, Colorado Buffaloes, minus two and a half, winner. Minnesota, loser. Ended up being a slight down day. It is what it is. We move on. Um we, once again, didn't put any baseball up yesterday, which I'm 
now that I'm now I'm more annoyed about it because I like the over, you like the Padres. We would have both won. Um, but it is what it is. We move on and uh we go from there. Um mm-hmm. but uh we'll we'll say hi to the champ and then uh we'll jump into some hooky. Um hope I all right, my stream yard's not showing me any chat, Nick. That's that's convenient. Uh, let's it, see. It's literally a white screen. Unless I would actually uh, click on it. Go green, go white. MSU all day, all the way to the end, and we'll win. All we do is win no matter what. I, will, I got Michigan State today. I got Michigan State to make the Sweet 16. So yeah. go green, go white outright. Sparty party, Tim A, yeah. our squad, victim one. They're going down Mississippi State. Now back to you. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back out and come back in so maybe I can see the chat. Okay. Sounds good. What's up, my guys? Let's get it. Let's cash today. Uh, hit the like button. Be well, subscribe, appreciate some subscribe and share. And Tim A, you know the rest. We get uh, uh, yeah, some NBA and MSU. Yeah. Now I can see the chat. Now you can see it. Awesome. I believe all the faves won last night in the NBA, but didn't cover some the, uh, of them. But I do, I don't recall who was the favorite in the Cleveland Miami game. That was Cleveland, was Cleveland. Cleveland was, but Miami won. There you go. I wish we took Milwaukee. They covered. Jazz covered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, putting all the chips on the table. Sabers money line all in. No. Oh boy. Bucks falls short in Beantown barely. Uh Greek freak didn't play. I'm impressed my Bucks game time. There you go. Uh Road Warriors. Ooh, I accidentally clicked off of there we go. Road Warriors um blew out the Grizz. Yeah. Uh KD passed Shaq, all time leading scorer now is eight. Uh KD um I like KD, but Shaq is one of my favorite all-time favorite players. Fair. KD, yeah. Games is starting early today at noon for college basketball. Yes, we get March Madness starting in two hours. I mean, we've had the first four games. We get the round of 64 starting in two hours. Michigan State for that game. Uh, Leafs, minus one and a half. Numbers don't lie. Easy money. Uh, I think the Washington Capitals will be a beautiful bet against going down the stretch here. 22 and 8, the last 30 bets. Uh, most losses due to NBA. So cutting that out, red hot. There you go. Morning, guys. In St. Louis, on my way to Memphis for the games. Hell yeah. But we will get into today's card here. And we will get it started with the New York Islanders um, taking on the Detroit Red Wings in this game. Uh, let me get the numbers up here. There we go. Let's. Slide this over because I didn't have the line history in front of my face. So when that loads, um, this is a big matchup uh, for these two teams. The Islanders, I don't like using the term must-win game, but this is a must-win game for the Islanders if they want any shot at the playoffs still. Um, And the Detroit Red Wings have been falling apart as of late. They're still somehow in a playoff spot. And it's amazing watching this playoff race go down um because it nobody, feels like nobody wants it nobody wants it nobody wants it um the red wings don't want it the islanders don't want it the Capitals somewhat want it but i mean nobody in this in this race wants it at all there we go line open up at the even money for the islanders it's now minus 110 on both sides on DraftKings. so we've had a line move towards the islanders line open up at a six it's up to a six and a half so we've had a line move towards the over and we've had a line move towards the Islanders in this spot here. Let's take a look at the cash flow, see if it represents that. Uh, where we have this game, 52% of the tickets are on the Red Wings, yet the lines move towards the Islanders in this spot. So kind of interesting line movement here, or this one. And um, no cash flow, though, in this game. And for me, this is going to be a fade of the Red Wings. This is not a bet on the Islanders. This is a fade of the Red Wings. Yes, the Red Wings won last game. They had to score with less than a minute left in regulation to force overtime against a bad Columbus team. They get blown out against Pittsburgh. They beat Buffalo, which was a little bit of a revenge game from when Buffalo whooped their ass. They lose both to Arizona. They get they get beat by Vegas. 
They lose to Colorado. This is a team that I've been fading for a decent while now, and I haven't lost two in a row fading this Red Wings team. So this is a dead wings fade for me. This is not a bet on the Islanders because the Islanders have not impressed me as of late. They've put up 2.1 or fewer expected goals for in five straight games. This is not a good this is a team that's not putting up good offensive numbers right now. Granted, defensively, they've only given up more than three expected goals once in their last 10 games. Um, and and they've actually actually more than 2.75 expected goals once in their last 10 games. So this is a team that defensively has been really strong. Offensively has fallen off um, since the, 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 that game against the Kings. I don't know what's going on with them offensively. It's just nothing's working at the moment. Uh, but if there's ever a team that the Islanders' offense can get started against, how about this Detroit Red Wings team who's given up 4.24 expected goals against on average the last 10 games? They've only had an expected goal numbers of less than uh, three, three times in their last 10 games. And both those were 2.9 and 2.91. So defensively, this Detroit Red Wings team has been bad lately. So if there's a team that maybe can fix the offensive woes for the Islanders, I think it's this Red Wings team. So I'm going to take a shot here with the Islanders at minus 110. I'm going to shop around and find the best number here in this game. Um, This is a fade of the Red Wings. This is not a bet on the Islanders. I wanted to make that clear. This is continuing the Dead Wings fade um, for me. So I'm going to be on the Islanders in this game. Good luck to you. Um, I'm not going to be betting any um, sides or totals today. I'm going to have eight player props and, uh, and and go from there. I do have a player prop in this game, and I know it's going to be against your Islanders, but honestly, I don't really care right now. Um, he's gotten a point in five straight games. It's Lucas Reitman. Uh He's been on fire. Um, somebody that if you're going to be backing – Now's the time to do it. And out of those, he, he's gotten to the eight points in the last five games. And seven of those points were goals. So if you want to take a goal score prop for Raymond as well, that might not be a bad idea either. Um, I like uh, I like Lucas Raymond to uh, get on the scoreboard today. And I was able to get that at minus 130. Um, to, uh, and the player props, because I like to have fun with them, they're – it's a, it's a small type of bet thing. I put together an eight-leg round robin um, for player props. So I like to have a little bit of fun with that. Uh, Lucas Raymond point prop will be the first one on my card today. Fair. Uh, I currently see a minus 105 here on bet 365 that I'm going to be betting with the Islanders. I'm just – it's just trying to confirm my location. That's all it's trying to do so I can bet that. But I'm going to be on the Islanders at minus 105 at bet 365. There you go. Um, where did you leave off? Uh, let's see. Uh, there. Bum fight. Red Wings minus one and a half plus 210. Larkin is back. Larkin is back. Star player return. See if that makes any difference. Hi, Sam. Hi, Nick. Are you guys? How are you guys? We're good. Good, Brad. Your, uh, you took the points last night with the Bucks. Nice. Sorokin, four-game losing streak. I mean, we know. I wouldn't be, best, surpri- we know I would be surprised if they game. went to uh, Varlamov in this game. Sorokin's not been very good. OT. No OT. No OT. Draw. The draw. No, no OT. Yes. Uh, I think I have to go Islanders due to the revenge game. Never caught, catch a 0-5 knife. Don't be a hero. Holy crap. Twins. All these NCAA games, let's focus on that value, value, value. Um, Marcos, I'll, I'll hit you up in a minute. Uh, laughing. By the way, Nick, put up your hockey plays while we while we go through the show. Yeah, yeah um, I mean, yeah, go I right the first thing I bet so far. The Brink cap, anytime goal uh, that's coming on a power play, as long as it comes from Lucas Raymond. Like Tim's player prop, thank you. Hey. This is a great idea. Cancel this game altogether. Give no one points to anybody. Yes. That sounds, like, you can do that to the Sabres, too. Give them no points the rest of the season. Why? Sounds we're fire, trying, man. No, we're trying to catch these two teams. So, yeah, no, I, I agree, real deal. I like that. Um, Nick, what uh, what team does Pe- uh, Luca Peckin all you 
Ken play on. Uko, Pekka, Lukanen. Saber. Saber. Saber's money on. Damn. Uh, did you let NBA yet? No, we have not gone over NBA yet. Let's go to this one, Nick, which I have a player prop from this one too. Yeah, let's get into it here. The Boston Bruins and the New York Rangers. The Bruins minus 145 favorites in this game. Total of five and a half. Kind of surprised me to see the Bruins be this big of favorites in this game. And maybe that's a t- maybe a little bit of a sign. On bet uh, on uh, DraftKings, it opened up at a 130. It's now a 135. So we've had a move towards these Bruins. And the line opened up at a five and a half. It stayed there in this game. Uh, taking a look at the cash flow in this one, we have 58% of the tickets are on the Rangers, but yet no line or but a line movement towards the Bruins in this spot here. And looking at this matchup for me, I have this game projected uh, for the Bruins to be trying to do math in my head 130, 135 favorites in this game. So actually, I actually think this line is correct. Uh, this Rangers team, I do expect a little bit of regression from them when you look at their numbers. They've actually they've been okay. Boston has been pretty decent with their numbers here as of late. Uh, these are two teams that I'm not particularly looking to bet against. But, I, I, I mean, the Bruins are a team that uh, I think this number is about right. Uh, and, the, and the Rangers are a tough team to bet against. We took Winnipeg last game. I thought that was a bad spot for the Rangers here. Maybe the Rangers off a loss here. But I'm, I'm not really interested in this one. It's going to be a great game to watch um, for people uh, looking to watch hockey tonight. This will be a, a good quality game these are two i believe division leaders unless ours uh i think florida actually stole the division leader in the atlantic um but um this is nope, boston's a, the leader in the atlantic boston is the division by leader three in points I th- wow good maybe uh i like that matchup for the panthers in the first round against the leafs i really like that actually um uh, but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll i'm gonna pass on this game be a great game to sit back and watch though I have a player prop, Mr. Jake DeBrusque. Um, He's gotten a point in five out of his last six games. The only game he did not get one in was against the Blues when the um, Bruins scored one goal. Um, So kind of hard to get a point when they don't score. Um, And he didn't get a point against Edmonton the game before, uh, the game in between Toronto and Toronto. Uh, so if you count the Edmonton game, eight, uh, six out of his last eight games, he's gotten at least one point in. And uh, four out of those eight games, he's gotten at least two points. So if you want to take a little bit of Jake DePress, two-plus points, not a bad option either. He's been he's been scoring. Uh, I got his point prop for my thing at even money. Um, that's going towards my eight-leg round robin. Uh, so Jake DeBrusque, let's get an assist today or get a goal. A point in general. Let's do it. Fair. Um, Rangers money line. Fair. Good luck to uh, today, Twins. I like Oregon and Michigan State. Yes. Yes and yes. Okay. Okay, Tim. I'll talk to you. Later. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk to you after the show. Uh, I like Bruins, but pa- uh, but don't like the value. Got to pass. Yeah. Uh, okay, Luca on that team. Then go Sabers and Detroit Red Wings. No, not 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 Red Wings. Sabers are trying to catch the Red Wings. Uh, any parts of the Astros St. Louis game? No. Come back to us in the regular season. Let's go to this one, Nick. I got another player prop in this game. Yeah, I forgot to type in the line for this game for the Hurricanes. They're minus two forty favorites here. Total of six against the Philadelphia Flyers. Line opened up at minus 225. It's up to 245 now. So we've had a move towards these Hurricanes. Line opened up at a 6 at minus 125. It's now a 6 at minus 112. Um, let's take a look at the cash flow in this game, which we have basically not. 93% of the tickets are on the uh, Hurricanes money line, but we really don't have cash flow, and I really don't care when it when it's those types of numbers. Um, and... Um, for me, I have this game priced for the Hurricanes to be minus 220 favorites in this game. I think this line was correct. I wanted to back the Hurricanes in this spot. I was hoping they were going to be minus 175, minus 180 in this game. But seeing 240, I think this line's priced about right. Uh, I think the Hurricanes take care of business in this game. But do I want to lay a number like that with them? No. Uh, so this will be another pass for me. Um, if you want to get creative, Jake Gensel, I think, um, is worth a look. He's been pretty good since coming to Carolina. Kusinetsov has been decent since coming to Carolina as well. Um, but 
who are the ones we mentioned? You know, Tyson Forrester, maybe Morgan Frost for the uh, the Flyers side, but uh, pass. I want to take one of the more hotter players on this uh, Carolina Hurricanes team, and that's uh, Mr. Seth Jarvis. Um, I got his uh, point prop at minus 130. Uh, he's got a point in five out of his last six games. The only one he didn't get a point is when they got shut out by the Rangers. It's tough to get a point when you get shut out. Um, so he's been a player that's been on fire. Um, he's been also shooting the puck. Uh, four, four, two, and three shots on goal in his last four games. So they've been giving him a little bit more, um, a little bit more chances. So he's been scoring. Um, give me Seth Jarvis uh, today. I got his point prop at minus one thirty. Not a bad look too. He's been pretty good. I like Carolina in this game. Maybe Carolina is something you could tie something else with, but other than that, they're not. Ooh, worth Carolina, it. Carolina parlay. Oh yeah, so you can get the Hurricanes, the Hurricanes Tar Heels, so you can get Hurricanes down from minus two forty to minus two thirty eight. Hmm. Like I generally, know. that would probably be all it would move, right? I, I, I was joking. I was joking. No, like I'm being, like I'm genuinely curious now. Anyways, you're right back. I'm gonna see how much it would move. <laughs> Panarin goal, Pasta goal parlay. As long as Pasta's getting an assist from DeBrusque, we're good. Aho and Genzel goals props. As long as they're getting an assist from Jarvis, that's fine. Definitely Flyers kept it close against uh, tough opponents recently. They have. Okay, I was wrong, Tim. You can, you can, if you parlay the Hurricanes with the Tar Heels, you can get it from minus two forty down to minus two thirty two. Wow. Yeah, okay, there you go. I'm, I was Someone wagging it wins out, right? <clears throat> Shout outs to everyone. What's up, fellas? Did, did, did I do it good? Did I do a good racer? I did you proud. Um, sure. What's up, racer? Sharp picks. Uh, Kane's puck line and the Rockets to win. Personally, I got one play in uh, in the NBA, and it's not in that game. Yeah, this one's an interesting one here. Kind of caught me off guard seeing uh, the Senators favored it in this game. Minus 140, total of six and a half. Uh, let's take a look at the line history in this one between St. Louis and Ottawa, where we have this line opened up at a 130. The line hasn't moved. And we have this line open up at a six and a half minus one fifteen. It's down to a six and a half minus one oh five. The Blues still have something to play for. They're fighting for a wild card spot, and the Senators have nothing to play for. Fifty three percent of the tickets are on the Blues. Then we have fifty percent of the tickets. Ninety seven percent of the cash is on the under in this game here. The wrong team's favored in this spot for me. Um, and when for starters, we got a massive goaltending advantage with Jordan Bennington over Corpusalo or Forsberg. Fill in the blank there. I do not care. Um, and at plus 120, I got to take the Blues here in this spot. Uh, this is a Blues team that still has something to play for. And they have been playing a little bit better as of late. They had uh, they lost their they, they had their winning streak snapped um, against the, um, the Avalanche in their last game. But that was a 4-3 game that, honestly, they were the better team in. Uh, so I'm going to look to play the Blues here in this spot. Uh, let me find the best available line, which I'm seeing FanDuel at plus 114 as the best available line. I'm going to move on the uh, the Blues here in that spot, in this spot here at plus 114. I got another player prop. Will you be my neighbors? Jake Neighbors. Uh, for a, a goal in four straight games. Uh and player props for me, I just want to kind of ride hot hands. And when you've gotten a point in four straight games, that is um, the def- that is definitely a hot hand. Uh, I was able to get his at plus 120. Um, so just a player that I want to be backing right now. So Jake Neighbors, uh, point prop uh, for me, plus 120. Um, I do like your Blues play. I like it. I like it. Sends money line, way faster team, better offense. As long as neighbors scores a point, I don't care who wins. Let's keep on rolling it because we still got a lot of hockey games. Yes. Uh, this was another yeah. one that caught my attention a little bit here, the Winnipeg Jets. I'm going to go grab a drink real quick. You're back. I, I have the, nothing in this game. Fair. Winnipeg Jets and the New Jersey Devils. Let's get the line history up on this game here where we have Winnipeg. 
uh, that on DraftKings opened up at a minus 130. It's still a 130 to, to dip down to a minus two. Uh, well, minus 125, my bad. Um, and then the total opened up at a six. It's now a six at minus 112. So we've had a move, move towards the over, and we've had a uh, we've had no move on the side here. Uh, we have 50, uh, 65% of tickets and 75% of caches on Winnipeg here. And the line's moved towards the uh, – the line has not moved at all in this game here. And this is another case of why is Winnipeg this short of a favorite? Uh, I see value on the line here with Winnipeg, and I will be moving on Winnipeg in this game. Um, I see a, a big goaltender advantage. Now, Jake Allen has looked a lot better um, with New Jersey since coming to the uh, coming to the uh, Devils. He has been better. Uh, but looking at this game, I thought this line should be more along the lines of 150, 160 range, not a, not a minus 125 for Winnipeg here. I think Winnipeg is one of those teams that just gets underrated all uh, that that's been underpriced. It feels like all season long. And um, I'm going to look to back them here in this spot. Give me the better goaltender. Give me the better team. At a, at a reasonable price tag here uh, at, at minus 125. Uh, let me shop around, see if I uh, what the best available line is for me in this game uh, where I can get on FanDuel and ESPN bet minus 120. I want to grab the 120 on FanDuel uh, with this game with Winnipeg. I think this is a, a really nice line for Winnipeg in this game uh, to – to get a win against New Jersey, minus 120. I'll take a shot here with the Jets in this one. Um, uh, blues as long as it's Benny. Yeah, I like that. Jets puck line. Uh, any pot, uh, any pots for the Rockets and the Chicago Bulls? I didn't even look at the NBA. There is an 11 game hockey card and there is March Madness. I did not even look at the NBA. I won't look at the NBA today. So. Jets probably putting some on the 60-minute. Fair. Uh, Jake Allen from Montreal, but born in Brunswick, New Brunswick. There you go. Under six. I, I can't trust the Devils for an under. I just can't. Uh, so, no no interest in an under for me in that game. Uh, but I will take the minus 120 with the Jets here in this spot. Welcome back, Tim. Hi. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't touch this game. For player props. I do have something in this game, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on here. We have the Florida Panthers and the uh, Nashville Predators. The Panthers opened up at a minus 205 in this game, immediately went to 192, and since then has not really moved too much. Um, it actually has moved another 10 cents down to a 182 on DK. Um and the line opened up at a six and a half at minus 120, and now it's down to a six at minus 120. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards Nashville. And I can understand the move towards Nashville. Um, in this game, we have no no ticket numbers for this game. So that's super helpful on uh, this one here. Um, I understand the move towards Nashville. This has been a team playing really well as of late, and you're getting a big plus price tag. I lean Nashville in this game. I think this line should not be as wide as it is. However, I do not want to fade the Panthers off of what happened to them last game. They lost to the they lost to the Lightning five to three. They dominated the Lightning in that game. They put up fifty shots on goal, four point seven one expected goals, four to one point eight six against. But Brovsky had a bad night that night, and Vasilevsky stood on his head, and that was the difference in that game. Um, when you put up those type of numbers, and then you have a few days to sit on it. I would look more towards the Panthers' first period puck line for them to come out pissed in this game after what happened last game. Do you lose to a bit of rival that you absolutely dominated in that game? I expect full attention here from the Panthers, especially with the Predators team that uh, has been red hot as of late. The draw could be interesting in this game as well, which is why I'm probably staying off the Panthers because the Panthers, you'd have to lay the minus one line or the puck line in this game. But uh, a lean draw uh, at the number – at the number for line ver- purposes, lean Preds for situational, lean Panthers. So it's not a game I'm getting involved with. Originally, I was looking at a one player for a uh, player prop. Saw that his to get a point prop was minus 210 and said, All right, I'll pivot elsewhere. Uh, and I pivot to the other side. Give me, because uh, originally I wanted to go Sam Reinhardt. Um, he was too expensive. 
Let's go ahead and grab a very hot player in Roman Yossi then, minus 135. He's gotten points in eight out of his last 10 games. In terms of the last three games, two points against the um, Winnipeg Jets, both of them assist. Two points against the Seattle Kraken, both of them goals. Three points against the Sharks, two assists and a goal. Um, he has been on fire. He didn't score any points against Columbus and Montreal. Um, he had a assist against the Wild. He had an assist against the Sabres. He had two assists and a goal against Minnesota on the 29th and a uh, assist and two goals against Ottawa on February 27th. So this is a player that's been really hot as of late, and I was able to get his. His was the most expensive, tied for the most expensive one. Uh, Roman Yossi, minus 135 for a point today versus the Predators. Fair enough. Um, Panthers, money line minus 165 parlay piece. I could see that. Can't get can't start doubting Preds until they give me a reason to. Panthers are showing kinks in their armor. Yeah, it's kind of concerning. Well, they weren't going to win every single game all the time. No. All right, Nick. Let's get into this one here. We have the Edmonton Oilers and the Buffalo Sabres. We have the Oilers minus 225 favorites, total of uh, six in this game. Buffalo, or this game opened up 225. It's up to 230 now on DraftKings. So we've had a slight move towards the Oilers. Line opened up at a six and a half. It's down to a six now in this game, which is kind of interesting. Um, absolutely no cash flow from this game. Nothing. No tickets. No nothing, uh, which is super fun for that. Um, this game, I mean, I have the Oilers as favorites in this game, needless to say, but I had them more along the lines of 165, 170 favorites in this game. Um, I see value on Buffalo. However, I'm not going to play Buffalo at all. This is a third game in four days for Buffalo. And on this West Coast trip, uh, they got the win against Seattle. Um, but during this road trip, they've been outplayed in all three games. They've lost the expected goal battles uh, by 0.7, by 2.26, and by 5.18. They were absolutely dominated by Vancouver last game, and I'm shocked that the score was only 3-2 looking at those numbers, and that just shows how good Uka Pekka him was. Actually, no, that was Devin, was Levi, Devin Levi. That, that was de- how good Devin Levi was in that game because that should have been a game that Vancouver put up six goals, and they only did put up three. So uh, maybe some promise coming out of uh, Devin Levi there. but well, We um, never had any doubts with him. He just sent him down to develop more. Yeah. Um, so kind of an interest, okay, nice little development there that you got with Devin Levi, but, uh, no, I have no interest in this game. It's Sabres or nothing, but I'm not backing a team on a third game in four days on a West coast trip. That's just something that I like to stay away from. This could easily be five, one at Oilers, or this could be four, three Sabres in overtime. So, um, I have no interest in this game. The range of outcomes are way too wide for me in this one, potentially, uh, Sabres look like a fun little dog today, but, uh, not what I'm going to bet. I uh, I I kind of flip flopped between two players per player prop in this game, and yes, they're on the Sabers. Sue me. I ended up going to use Thompson. Um, I almost decided to go with um Rasmus Dahlin. Did you see that block that he had at the end of the game uh, against uh, Vancouver when there was no time left, but he just didn't want the empty netter? Mm. He threw his body in front of a puck. <laughs> Nice. Like, he, like he showed, he, he showed that he, you know, they care still. Uh, no players are gonna throw their body in front of an empty netter with seven seconds to go, um, if they don't care. So it shows me that the Sabers still have hope. They still, I mean, they played a look. They they played a close game. Yes, they might have gotten dominated, whatever. Um, but I, I, I am gonna grab. I'm not. I'm not betting the Sabers. Let's. I'm, I'm, let me get that out there now. I'm not betting the Sabers. I will be betting Tage Thompson score point minus one twenty five. The difference between me betting Tage Thompson and Rasmus Stalin, Dalin was minus one thirty five. Uh, so a little bit better juice with my boy TNT. So um, I end up just going Tage Thompson to score a point today. Part of my round. Fair, Fair enough. Do, do, do. Panthers aren't going to win every single game, but the Predators have been. 
Why isn't it? There we go. Now it's clicking. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, Joe? Oilers money line. That's a bull take at minus two something. Uh, Sabres have been treating me well lately, but I never trust them. Pass. Um, Darlene is gross. Best player on the Sabres. Um, I mean, I think I, Ooh, I think I would agree with that. In the beginning of next year, he's going to have a C on his jersey for sure. Will he? Yes. You think of him? So. Yeah. yeah. He, um, Darlene. It should be Darlene. It should be Thompson. And it should be um, Dylan Cousins. That should be your A. I, uh, think, your yeah, C I, I like Dylan Cousins to get the C. Honestly. No, I don't, I don't think he does. Darlene's been the better player. He's been more of the leader. Uh, did you watch? See, the here's the time? thing, though. Ak- Akposa was the captain, and he was not a better player than almost he was, anybody. He was more of team. a veteran. No, I yeah, don't. It could be, no, it could be a Cousins leader. Team. It's a, it's a locker room leader. It doesn't mean it's your best player. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm saying it's not going to be uh, Cousins. No, I did not Fair watch the. Uh, I did not watch it, but I, I saw watched. that I cashed my bet. Yeah, I watched the end. Of the, I watched from the sixth inning on because the game went so long that I was able to. Yeah, Robert, would you take forty three percent money line payout on what? Oilers, I'm guessing. Uh, we would got forty percent. Uh, we still have payout. Four, four hundred fifty on what? Four hundred. Yeah, oh, what a beautiful matchup we get here. Um, the Chicago Blackhawks and the Anaheim Ducks. Um, the Blackhawks, no, the Ducks, my bad, are favorites in this game. The Ducks are favored in a hockey game right now. Uh, let's let that sit in. Granted, it's at home against Chicago, but still, I don't I don't think they should be. Line open up at a 135 for Anaheim, and it's down to a 122. I think that line move is correct um, in this spot. Line open up at a 6 at minus 105. It's still a 6 at minus 105. Um, see if we have any cash flow in this game. No. Uh, just 71% of the tickets are on the over 1,800 tickets in. I have no faith in the in the Anaheim Ducks in this game. Defensively, they've been putrid. 3.43 expected goals against. Offensively, this team is averaging 1.93 expected goals for the last 10 games. Um, yeah, give me the Blackhawks all day in this game. All day in this game. Uh, it's pretty simple. And I get it. The Blackhawks do not win road games. Uh, They've struggled on the road this year. However, the wrong team is favored in this spot. Uh, And I will be on Chicago in this game. I will be on the Blackhawks. I I like this spot for them here. They dominate the the Ducks. This has been a team that they've actually had, I believe, pretty good track history against, if I remember right, because I think I remember hearing that from Terry. um, That, yeah, eight and two in their last ten meetings. Two straight and eight of the last ten. Uh, won by the Blackhawks in this one here. Um, and uh, I'll, I'm going to shop around, find the best number, but I will be on Chicago in this game. Uh, and on ESPN Bet, they're giving me plus 105. So uh, give me plus 105 with the Chicago Blackhawks in this game on ESPN Bet. Um, I wanted to take Bedard to get a point, but that was minus 205, so I um, stayed completely away from this game. 1-800 Gambler. Have fun. Sabres money oh, line. See, this guy's smart. Good job, real deal. But by the way, one more, one more thing I need to mention about the last game there. Stop it. Get some help. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, brothers, and good chat. And then chat. Good luck today. Let's smash the books. Cash the bonus triple double in the third quarter last night. Going back to it tonight. Same play. Hell yeah, I get it. Pass. March second, Bedard beat. Uh, sorry, Bedard. Blackhawks beat the Ducks seven to two. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's get some under action. Troy Terry, Bedard, goal, parlay. Okay. Interesting. I only have one player prop left, and it's uh, it's in the Seattle-Vegas game. Fair enough. Uh, we have the uh, Vancouver Canucks as $3 favorites in this game with a total of 6.5 in this one. Let's take a look at the line history this game where we have – Let's line open up at a 298. It's still a 298. Line open up at six and a half feet even, even money. It's still there. No line movement at all in this game. Let's take a look at the cash flow in this one here. 29% of the tickets, 94% of the cash is on the Canadians uh, in this spot. 
I don't disagree with that line movement towards the Canadians in this one here. Are we really laying three dollars with the Canucks with the Smith and that? Like the Canucks have not been playing well as fleet. And maybe all I want to do in this game is come in, ask the Canadians to be leading after one period and, and get out type of thing. I have the I have the Canucks around a minus two hundred favorite in this game. So I kind of I, I lean Canadians. I think it would be Canadians' first period for me if I had to bet anything here because I can easily see them being up one nothing, two to one at the end of the first period, but then losing this game. Um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, best available line here I'm seeing is plus two forty full game with the Canadians. First period I'm seeing plus one ninety two one season sports book. I'm kind of interested in that first period at plus one ninety two. Uh, is it a game I'm going to get involved with? Probably not. I would like to fade the Smith and the Canucks. I don't know if this is the right spot to do it, though. Canucks are coming off of a uh, maybe a letdown spot after a big win against probably one of the best teams in hockey. Okay. Um, this is a, this is a stay away spot for me. Uh, once again, I my, my last hockey play is in the next game. Under. Okay. The Canucks are really good at cycling the puck and not scoring. Low key, they're good though. I don't know. Yeah, they've been. Yeah. Canucks money line with the over. Canucks money line with the over. Canadians Ooh, plus, one, plus and one and a half. I mean, the Canadians have been like the king of one goal losses this year. There you go. Let's jump into this one. Nick and I got my last play in this one. Yeah, we get two more games remaining uh, on the card here. Uh, at least for me, um, the Vegas Golden Knights and the Seattle Kraken. These two teams just played not too long ago. Their line opened up at a 185, and it is uh, still a one, it's up to a 192 on DraftKings. So we've had a seven cent line movement here towards the Golden Knights. Line opened up at a six and a half at minus 105. It's a six at minus 105 down. So we've had a move from that six and a half down to that six number there, which is kind of interesting. And we've had a slight move towards uh, Vegas. 82, 88% of the tickets are on Vegas, though. So that's probably why we've had the line move down the way we have. Uh, so that's about right there. We have nothing on the total in this game here. Um, and looking at my projections here, I have Hill and Decord. I see value on the Seattle Kraken in this game. And I think the Seattle Kraken are a little bit more bet on than the Vegas goal than I turn now. And these two teams just played not too long ago, and Seattle blew a lead and lost in overtime. Uh, they had a 4-2 lead uh, late in that game, and and Vegas came back and won. Now we had two the uh, now we had two the the fortress for this game here, and I'm seeing plus 160 on DraftKings, plus 160 on FanDuel, plus 160 on Bet365. I think I want to move on the Kraken here, release the Kraken a little bit in this game. Someone tries to call me there. Cool. Um, I'm going to move on the Kraken in this game at plus 160. I'm bet 365. Uh, I'll, I'll take a player from the Kraken. I wouldn't know if I – I don't think I would take anything from the Kraken that have lost five straight games. Um, but I will be taking a player that's been getting on the scoreboard uh, in seven out of his last ten games, and that is Mr. Oliver Bjorkstrand. Um, I mean, it's been one point, one point, one point. Like set uh, seven points in ten games, but he's been got he's gone on the scoreboard in seven out of ten games, and somebody I'd like to grab here on the Kraken. I was able to get it at minus one fifteen. Um, that kind of rounds out my eight player props for today. Um, we get to finish out on with uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand, Nick. Like it. Uh, Canadians in regulation. Whoa. Uh, Vegas, Golden Knights puck line. Luca build out 25 plus points, eight rebounds, eight assists, minus 120 boosted on Fanatics. Uh, nice. After what the Sabres just did to the Kraken, I hope VGK jumps uh, all over them right away. Gross game, Vegas in regulation. Let's head to the final uh, hockey game of the night, Nick. Yeesh. Minus 400 road chalk in this game. Anybody interested in some Sharks money line? Uh, let's get into it here. Um, uh, but let's, yeah, let's get into the line history in this one uh, where we have 
this line opened up at a 340. It's up to a 375 now for the Lightning. Line opened up at a 6.5 minus 110. It's a 6.5 minus 112. Um, I'm seeing no cash flow on this game for the sidewise. Uh, 25% of the tickets, 94% of cash on the under in this game. And I believe I've seen a little bit of a line move towards the under, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but um, look at this game for me here. I want to take a look at one quick thing for tomorrow. Okay, no, they do not play tomorrow. They they play next on Saturday in L.A. Okay, I didn't know if potentially we're going to see a, a Jonas Johansson sighting for a back-to-back type of situation. I wouldn't be surprised if, if they want to give uh, Vasilevsky a break. This could be a good game to do it. I have this game projected for seven goals. I'm going to play the over six and a half in this game here. Uh, I also do not trust the Lightning, especially at this number right now. Um, and this Sharks money line is staring me in the face. Um, I kind of want to just take a flyer on the Sharks money line or at least maybe take a shot with the, the plus two and a half if you can find a decent number on plus two and a half. I'm seeing minus 140 on the ESPN bet. Um this feels like a game where it could be closer than people think. I'm just going to move on the over six and a half right now, uh, which on DraftKings is minus 112 uh, in this game. I think this game should be a seven. So give me some Sharks lightning over six and a half minus 112. Uh, I wanted to find something lightning props related. Everything is all super expensive. So uh, I end up leaving all of them off my card and, uh, and moving on. Um, I'm happy with my eight player props for today um, with Jake neighbors at plus 120 Jake DeBrusque, even money, Lucas Raymond, minus 130 Seth Jarvis, minus 130 Roman Yossi, minus 135 Anthony Duclair, minus 135. Oh wait, Duclair. Duclair's on yeah. the table. Never yeah. mind. I have, I have Duclair. I have Anthony Duclair today. That's, I was going to say, I remember you mentioning him pre-show. You know what? I, I, don't know how, but I completely missed that because oh, because he's down the list a little bit. Um, Duclair has gotten a point in six straight games and seven out of eight. The only time that he didn't in those eight games was against San Jose in a two to one shootout loss. The they lost two straight games to San Jose. March second and March third, the Tampa Bay Lightning lost two straight games to San Jose. Interesting. Hmm. Um, but I, that's why I forgot about Anthony Duclair. Because the thing is, the thing is, we 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 have our uh, line, uh, we have our rotation or whatever, and my lineup is all messed up because I used covers on the order of the games. So I had Yorkshire as the last guy on my list. Um, so Anthony Duclair, Tage Thompson, and and, um, and Oliver B. Yorkshire. Those are my eight par- uh, player props for today, Nick. There you go. Um. Boosted lightning puck line minus one hundred eight on another fanatics boost. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of fanatics boosts. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of fanatics boosts you can use today. Uh, lightning so, minus two and a half. There you go. If you're gonna bet them, you have to lay that type of number. Uh, lightning. This is a desperate lightning team. Uh, Braden Point hat trick twenty seven to one. Uh, won't won't talk you off of that. Uh, over uh, lightning keep uh, uh, lightning going to kick the crap out of the sharks. They could win by seven themselves. They could. I Happy think. Yeah. Time. If you look at and if you look at it real quick, if uh, if you like the lightning, do not lay minus four hundred. Do not lay a puck line. Take a team total. Uh, which, um, granted, it's a four and a half, but you could probably make it on bet th- uh, bet MGM on a four at like minus one ten or something like that. So shop around. Look, if you're going to bet the lightning, take a team total or four or something like that. Don't take the money line or don't take the spread here. It's not worth it. Fair enough. Uh, should we head to the NBA? I'll be honest. This is the only game I have a plan. Uh, you can head into the NBA, break it all down, and then. Uh, but I'm going to head to class now. I have to be class in a few minutes. So peace out. I'll be pissed out here, but yeah, good luck. You know what, then? We'll talk this game, and I'll give you guys – I'll talk uh, two to three college basketball games, and then we'll head out. There you go. I'll talk college basketball. I won't waste time with – have fun, Nick, because I'm not going to waste y'all's time with an 11.5 point favorite, a 9.5 point favorite, a Bulls-Rockets game, a 14.5, a 9.5, and a 9.5. 
Instead, we will talk this game, which uh, we have a play in, and then we'll talk over. Uh, I have my slides from Bonn. I'll talk those. I'll talk those games over again, um, so that we actually have some value in talking some of these games. Um, the Pelicans against the Magic. Uh, the Pelicans are three point favorites with a total of two hundred seven. I'm on the Magic. Uh, I took the Magic outright. Um, I did not. I, I don't really need to go after uh, points here because I feel like if the Magic are going to cover, they're going to be winning this game outright to begin with. So for me, I kept it simple today. My one play in the NBA is early, and it's the Orlando Magic, uh, a team that I feel like I can still trust. This Pelicans team has been playing good basketball as of late, um, which is why they're as high as they are. They're 16 games over 500. Um, so this has been a sneaky Pelicans team. Where are they in the West? They're one game back of the Clippers in the West for that four seed. That's dangerous right there. That would be a fun matchup, but uh, I'm grabbing the Orlando Magic today in the NBA. Fly, Pelly's fly. Nope, I'm on the opposite side. All right, we'll quickly pull up these, and I know it's going to have a picks and parlay logo. I don't really care. Um, quickly, oop, let me pull out the banner or the scroller. Start off, these are, these are lines from last night. They might have changed. They might have not have. Um, we'll quickly run through these games. Uh, Michigan State and Mississippi State. Uh, Michigan State's a one and a half, 130 and a half to your total. I'm on the Sparty Party. Um, it's Tom Izzo in March. That That's kind of the wave I'm riding. I'm not super high on this Mississippi State team. Uh, before the tournament, they had lost four straight games. They beat a bad LSU team. They had a big win against Tennessee, and they made it in the tournament. Um, I just don't think this is a good enough team to kind of make a run. So we'll start off with them. We'll, we'll start off with, with Michigan State. Uh, Oregon versus South Carolina. Another team I'm not super high on is South Carolina. Um, and you just see the – I know we just saw Oregon uh, come and win. By the way, Oregon's a favorite now, uh, which makes me like them even more. Um, I'm going to be on Oregon, minus the one and a half, taking the Ducks against South Carolina. Final game, and this is probably my favorite play of today, Drake versus uh, Washington State. Drake's a one and a half point favorite uh, with a total of 138 and a half. Give me Washington State. Um, I actually have Washington State to make the uh, Sweet 16. Uh, I got that at 425. I also have Oregon at 475 to make the Sweet 16. So these are two teams, the last two games that we talked about, are two teams that I do really like in this bracket. Uh, so Washington State at uh, minus, uh, plus 105 in that one. Uh, Orlando, yes. MSU for this game, yes. MSU for today, yes. Sparty Party, yes. Uh, my Mavs to win the division ticket needs a magic win. I might drag myself back to the NBA for this one. Well, at least you have something to root for in this game, then. Uh, UNC to win it all. Yes. Or Oregon, Eileen. There you go. Washington State, I like. Yes. Pick them games are, are easy. No, they're not easy. Don't don't you ever say pick them games are easy. That is crazy, and that is nonsense. Uh, but that is all the games we'll talk about for today. Super excited for some March Madness. So uh, that that that's, that's awesome that we have it here now. Um, before we leave, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all that good stuff. Appreciate all the support. Check out all the links in the description below. Those are the important ones. YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. All of those are linked down below. If you guys are interested in becoming a member of the YouTube channel, uh, $5.99 a month, $0.16 cents a day. That's where you can go ahead and pick that up. Uh, for all the plays that are on the um, picksandparlays.net website that we put up, including 10 plays from college basketball today. Um, but... Recapping the card, Orlando Magic in the NBA. And then for me, Neighbors, DeBrusque, Raymond, Jarvis, Yossi, Declare, Thompson, Bjorkstrand, all to get a point in hockey tonight. Um, that's going to do it. Well, three more comments. Uh, laughing. In the NBA, they are. Eh, good show. Uh, thanks, Twins. Good luck to you guys. Good luck to you too, Marcos. And uh, go Sparty Party for today. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. Peace out, guys.